cut. No. Action is the word. Action. <laughs> yes. So we're live. You're looking at the camera. That one. The ma ma. The lens or the screen? Yes. Lens. No screen. Hi. Hello and welcome to another episode of here. Me. Plus you. It's us. Yes. <laughs> My name is Kwame. Hi, I'm Elaine. Okay, yeah, it's done. Enough with that. So yeah, welcome to another video right here on the channel. It's good to have you. It's a lovely, lovely day. I mean, I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but uh, we're happy Soon. to be here. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about something, uh, a bit of time travel, you know. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, what would you... Or what advice would you give your younger self? What dating? Yeah, it was about, it should be about love. What relationship and dating advice would you give your younger self? Okay. Yeah, if you could do it all over again. <laughs> As you can see from my face, this wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So you can... Yeah, so what dating advice would you give your younger self if you could do it all over again? I mean, yeah, we've all been through it. Mm -hmm. through a lot you know all the ups and downs and you know thinking that at some point you think that well I think I don't think this relationship thing is for me and I don't think Your oh it doesn't look proper it wasn't even proper it's not it's not it doesn't wow. yeah thinking that this relationship thing is probably not for me and I'm done but if you are doing well fairly well in whatever relationship you're in at this moment looking back then what would you Tell your younger self if you could. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a, how you say, interstellar kind of moment. Yeah. <laughs> Where I put, if I could go back and say something with the books. Yes. Then that's what I would do. Oh, you do. Okay. Exactly. You nerd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we start with your book closet. What would you sign uh, to yourself? What would I tell myself? Um, I think the my first. Uh, approach to relationships back then mm -hmm. was so stuck on star signs and horoscopes. Really? Yes. How? Because I've never heard you mention that when we were in a relationship. Because I dropped it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why did, okay, so tell us. So I was always thinking, and please forgive us, there's a lot of noise in the neighborhood construction going on. So I was so stuck on uh, reading star signs and horoscopes and characteristics and compatibility mm -hmm. and these things often tell you that oh maybe you're not compatible with say a Taurus mm -hmm. or a Virgo because of your characteristics or how you behave and how they behave and how generally people from these star signs don't work together yeah so anytime I would approach somebody I'll start talking to somebody I like and then they tell me oh I'm a Taurus and then I, I, I don't say it immediately, but I just say in my head like, hmm. So you studied all the star signs? Or I read, you just I, I read the ones you're compatible with? Yes, and non-compatible with as well. But who brought this concept to you? Or you just woke up one day like star No, I mean, star signs were like available. It's like social media, high five, all those places. You see it everywhere. High on... five, I don't even know what that is. Wow, you're such a, such a child. <laughs> Yes, I'm a child bride. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you saw it on social media, in newspapers even. Yeah, that's I remember. Yeah, in newspapers. Magazines, yeah, yeah, magazines, horoscopes. Mm. You see all those things and you're like, okay, so before I like this girl, I need to make sure that she's within the space of what, you know, drop it. That's what I'll tell my younger self. The first thing I'll tell my younger so self. So what about our it. star signs now? Because I'm a Virgo and you're a Libra. Libra, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just like, I just really like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say. I just really like but you. But it goes well because a Virgo is very meticulous and you're not really like that. So maybe that works well. I, at this point, my love, I don't care. Okay. That's I, I said, we work, we're working, mm -hmm. and we want to work. That's all that counts. So, younger self, drop this horoscope, matchy, matchy, and making excuses for your behavior or making excuses for their behavior and basing it on all, because they are Gemini, that's why we didn't work out. Find what the truth is. Yeah. Yeah, that's my first thing I would tell my younger self. Okay. Yeah. Okay, noted. What is yours? <laughs> I don't really have a good point. 
uh, I don't really regret anything, honestly. Um, oh. I mean, everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, I am somebody who has a lot, has had a lot of long relationships. I didn't fool around a lot. I don't think it's also for me. <laughs> what? I just find it really awkward, like the times I was fooling around with somebody because it's not clear like where we stand and it just gets in my head. It's not for me. I like it more when you are stable with somebody and you start exploring together. Yeah. I'm also wondering if one I sent really work for women because I don't think so. That's an interesting one we can talk about. <laughs> if one night stands actually do work for women or not. I don't know because I think that the, how women experience sexuality is a bit more layered. And for one person to get it immediately that one night, unless you're a magician, I'm sure those people exist. But in my experience, it didn't really work out. With one night stands. A lot, yeah. So I wanted to say like, don't be so serious because I had like a... So that's what you tell your younger self. Yeah, but okay, let me, let me finish. Okay. So don't be so serious would be an advice. But then, I mean, I had a long relationship in high school, like four years. And then after that, I was a year yeah. uh, single. But then I went to, into college and then I immediately found my then boyfriend. And we had a relationship for like six years or five years. I don't even remember. Um, and then I was single again, then I had some fool around things, but it wasn't, and then I met you, so <laughs> it's not really boring. It's um, not, but you, you, what I appreciate with your transition was mm -hmm. that after every relationship, you took time to at least, uh, chill. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. And, you know, just be. Be by myself. For a yeah. little bit. And even if you're having fun with other people as in enjoying uh, people's company even if it's just in the moment or it's short and enjoying sex or whatever it is i think it's it's okay to do that for yourself after a relationship yeah i think so too but i mean i didn't like it was fine but it wasn't something that i i get a thrill out of not like how it's like romanticized in yeah. like mainstream media that you that have one to sleep stands, with people yeah, the best way to get over somebody is to get on the, the next yeah but that one for me, I don't know. I like it more like exploring with the person and like yeah. so you can build on it. Yeah. So are I you, want to leave are it you at shy? that. <laughs> okay. Are you sure talking one. about it? Next one. Yeah, so I think I'll based off what you just said, um, I'll tell my younger self to sleep around less. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will tell my younger self not to uh, make relationships, like define their identity around relationships. Because I always saw myself yeah. as a, 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 a relationship person. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I was happier. I, I, I like it when I'm with somebody. And so when one didn't work, I felt like, oh, I, 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 I itchy. yes, I needed oh. to, no, I, I didn't feel okay. Not because there was a breakup, but I felt like you by yourself. Yes. Or living with exploring with somebody is always nicer than exploring by yourself mm. so i think there was no um there was, there was no uh there was not yes so much confidence in self uh, or the solitude or enjoying your own like you know will to be company yes there's not so much comfort in that i i sought the comfort in knowing that you have your person yeah so yeah i would tell i'll tell my younger self to chill you know, when there was, yeah. when one it didn't work out, that it was okay that if you were exploring something with somebody, it also didn't necessarily mean that when you had something or a good chemistry with somebody, it automatically meant that they should be the one. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think I'll tell my younger self that, that if you had something nice, something, you know, flowing, you know, those uh, crushes that last two weeks and then you don't speak again. Those ones, you just allow yourself. Those your... ones I didn't have, but yeah, <laughs> like you know, you, those, there are times when you find somebody that you think like you gel so much and you talk so often every day, and then it's finished, and then there's nothing more to talk about, and it becomes awkward, and then it, it eventually fades, it's gone. Like mm. it's not you were not in a relationship, so it's not a breakup. Those mm. phases, yeah. I'll just I'll just tell my younger self that it's okay to just. But I feel now you are very enjoy. more, you, you enjoy your company, your own company a lot. Yeah. So when did that shift then? Over time, because mm -hmm. I also didn't, 
tell myself not to try again or even though there was one that made me think that ah, the first one the first breakup yeah. which i was dumped mm -hmm. yeah no. i thought oh that's it never again I'm, I'm i'm single and lonely for life <laughs> yeah i've also had that after breakups then i would turn in i was imagining myself as a cat woman like with 17 cats and whoa no husband. <laughs> <laughs> very dramatic but it happens yeah yeah so i would tell my younger self yeah it's okay to just be by yourself for a while and yeah. just you know look at other things yeah, yeah. I think you also firmly believe in like the one kind of concept. I, I think so. Yes. Should I drop? Should, no, I can't drop that. Or should I drop that? I don't think I believe in the one one anymore. Well, you were in, very much looking for the one. Yes, yes, I was. I had been looking for it. And that's also another thing. When you actively look for it. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. You have to work on yourself and when you're ready, you'll meet the person. Yeah. If you keep yourself like, oh, I am who I am. I don't believe in that. But yeah. Anyway. Um, I think my... I only have two advice for myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did it. So it's more like in retrospect, it was a good uh, intuitive move. Yeah. Um, so don't settle. So before I met Kwame, I was in a long relationship with my college boyfriend. And I wasn't really... Okay, maybe I should say this on YouTube, but it's fine. I don't have his number, so I can't ask permission. <laughs> um, Are you going to mention his name? No, no, no. Uh -huh. I'm just going to mention the situation. So he, I really got along well, and like we were really serious. Yeah. Like I was somebody I could... We both knew we could spend our lives together if we wanted. But there's always this small voice telling me that I wasn't, I wasn't his number one priority. Oh. So he was quite self-centered. Okay. Uh, for example, we were in a relationship for four or five years. I don't really remember. And uh, he barely knew any of my friends. That's Only nice. one friend knew him because she liked talking to him. But all the others, he didn't really. He didn't really make an effort. Make an effort. No. And I, I always put it as, oh, he's shy. You're making excuses. <laughs> for four years. <laughs> You're making excuses for his yes. behavior. Yeah. So it came to a point where I was like, I don't, I think there must be something bigger than this. This is fine. It's comfortable. But I feel there is more to it. Like there's yeah. more out there. And that was a weird transition because I wasn't sure, of course and you kind of going to end something because of something you believe or feel you don't have any proof yeah but still i was like no i think even though we still loved each other i don't think this is it i'm yeah. settling for something yeah and so that was a hard breakup um, but in the end i'm happy i did it because when i met you you're very clear about your priorities and what I want. What you want. Yeah. Like, Kwame puts me on number one, sometimes even above himself. And you share that? Yes. <laughs> and not that that's what I always need, but how to say. It's just like he's really sure and he's really building. We are really building together and you're convinced about that. And you are taking care of me instead of me taking care of the other person which i do but oh, it's, it's, it's a balance yeah yes and i'm not giving away as much as i used to give away yeah. so it's more balanced it's more centered so i'm happy i didn't settle because i could have easily settled if i didn't have listened to that voice like there might be more i think i, I would just say that um, my next advice will be the same thing Oh. Yeah, I'm not... So what brought you to that advice? To not settle? Yeah. Um, if I had settled, we would not be here. If I had thought the relationships, because I had uh, a few relationships and there were some that I thought were also it. Mm. But in retrospect, when you, when you look back at some of yeah. the things that were happening and then you find somebody who, you know, for me, I always keep saying it that it was the fight that I saw in you. And when I say the fight, I mean that 
you were not ready to let a squabble mm -hmm. de decide whether we will be together or not, or whether it was compatible enough or not. You know, uh, most people. Um, which brings me to my next advice I would give myself. But um, most people do not know how to deal with the after aftermath of the honeymoon phase. When yeah. things become normal, when things become real, when things yeah. become like, okay, you're going to actually have arguments, proper yeah. arguments, heavy ones. And it's scary for them because they think, or the, the idea of love, when you love love, or when you're in love with the idea of what love is, instead of the person and the reality that follows, then it becomes very difficult for you to come to terms with arguments that seem to you know, make it feel like this shouldn't work or this won't work. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you st take a step back and dissect whatever is on the table, and if the person is also willing, that's the yeah, part that I said, willing. the fight that I loved. Yeah. The person's willingness to also, you know, bring me a share of solutions and be like an equal conversationist, communicationist, I don't yeah. know if they like, you know, to solve the issue and, and be okay with it. Yeah, not like ego against ego, but yeah. more like you're willing to be vulnerable and like work with on each it. other. Yeah. yeah, so that's one of the aspects which I find that a lot of people uh, lose possible good relationships on when they eventually think, or immediately, sorry, think that, nah, as for this fight, we're not going to come back from it. Yeah. And then they decide that, you know what, yeah, that's it, because. They are so stuck on not opening up to understanding and empathizing with where the person is coming from. You don't have to agree, you can empathize. Yeah, you can understand and not agree. Yeah. You can understand where somebody's coming, coming from. from. Still... And, then, and then that's where you get the energy to build a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I do also think that in, in media and all the things we see, like movies and stuff, we see a lot of the honeymoon phase, right? Yeah. So you see them ending up together and that's the end, the yeah. end. Yeah. You'll never see the messiness of what happens after. And sometimes I think it's a pity because the most interesting things happen after you not fall out of love, but when you not have the butterflies and all these things yes. when you're starting. The to butterflies don't die, but they stop flapping as fast. Yeah, that's exactly. what I, I say. I think so. Too. They don't die at all because there are points when. Oh, nice, nice yeah, metaphor. Yeah, um, there's times when you see the person after you've been together for long, and you just get the same yeah. feeling again, like wow, like you know, this is really happening. Yeah. But it's not gonna be happening every day. That's what you should remember after the honeymoon phase. So the butterflies don't die ever. If you really love the person, if you truly love the person, they don't ever die, but they stop. But it kind of transforms as well. Like it's not like love, like in the beginning when somebody touched you and you have that like buzzing feeling, like yeah. electricity. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I still have that when you do that, but it's not like all the time anymore. So it kind of transforms from that platonic, not platonic, like, I mean, on the surface, yeah. love to more like when Kwame is doing something really great, I'm really proud of him, then... The deeper yeah. sense so of it. So it's more like a deeper into it. Yeah. But do your exes have like a common team? In what sense? Like, do they have something in common? Oh, I should answer the question first and then you can think. Maybe. Um, I don't know about a common theme, except me being the common <laughs> Well, I'm sure we're all beautiful. Inside out. Oh yeah, I suppose, I, suppose, I, I like pretty. <laughs> That's a weird saying anyway. For no. me, I've always dated... So my... Physically, my ex, exes and my current husband don't have anything in common. But they are all very authentic people. So they were all doing their own thing. They were not like hmm. trying to fit in. Is I think I, I generally fall easily for people who are creative and kind of curious and then do their are not are not like yeah they're not fitting in and okay. that intrigues me okay yeah so if, if in you that would case put no. the pictures next to each other and there's in that case none of my they don't have anything in common <laughs> <laughs> you're just dating randomly this one this one this one so they don't have they don't have i don't think they have yeah they don't have 
in not drawing me to you kind of thing, uh, no. No. Okay. In that sense, no. I think I'll go more with another advice, my last advice. Do you have more advice? I don't have more oh. advice. <laughs> okay, my last advice would be to trust my process. Because looking now back at past relationship, I'm really easy to kind of beat myself over the fact like, oh, I should have broken up a long time before. Yeah. Could have saved another year of my life being yeah. single. Because when I commit, I really commit. Like I give everything. I'm super loyal. Like I'm like a golden retriever. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Like how I committed to, you even have golden retriever hair on your face. Um, I committed to you. That's how I commit. It's a decision. It's an active decision. And then I just dedicate myself to that. I really commit with everything I have. Yeah. And now looking back at it, it's a beautiful um, characteristic, right? Being able to fully give yourself. But, oh my God, girl, like, <laughs> if I would have been a bit more critical, I think I would have... Not stayed in the relationships as long as she did. For that long, yes. Um, but on the other, that's why, but I'm trying not to be hard on myself over that because apparently I needed that year to really figure out like, okay, this is not it. And then also be, because when I make a decision, I don't come back from it. So if I break up with you, I break up with you. There's no maybe, yeah. no. So I'm trying to also, maybe it's already working because in the beginning of the video it says I wouldn't do anything different. But I had a period where I would beat myself up over not listening better to myself. Self, yeah. um, but it's a process, so I have to trust the process. Apparently I needed that time to really make up my mind and move myself forward. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. And in the end we are here, so... Yeah. <laughs> ah, sometimes we're like, oh, this is really happening, you know? And yeah. Even the most like daily stuff, people call that mundane, right? Like yes. the most mundane things are nicer with you. So same. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you as well, what advice or what dating advice would you give your younger self? Put it in the comments below and let us know what dating advice you would give a younger yes. self. And yeah, Do one night stands work for you. <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> I would like to know, uh, especially if you're a woman. But maybe in Ghana, it's not as common. I don't think, maybe maybe I'm not in the circle of one night stands, but maybe th there is a, a culture of it I'm not aware of. I, but I, I don't think even people, when people do it, they, they do uh, kiss and tell, like, oh, I'm, I'm a, a staunch, I, no, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, so I don't know I if don't know. there is that, but okay. I'm just asking what dating advice you would give your younger self if you could talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to like the video, <laughs> subscribe if you already haven't. My name is Kwame and I'm Elaine. And this is me plus you. It's us. We'll catch you in the next video. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. You didn't do your... Dag, uh, dag lieve mensen. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Bye. Bye.